My parents divorced when I was around 12, and my mom went quite far away from the suburbs where I was going to school. So for a good while, I lived at my dad's place. Then when he met his new girlfriend, he partially moved in at her place since it was closer to their mutual workplace. So anyways, I lived pretty much alone at my dad's house for a few years, between 2008 and 2014. Besides the monthly visits from my dad to pick up his mail, I had the whole house to myself and had a blast most of the time, but being totally alone at night times in this house was kind of unsettling in the first month, but I gradually got used to it. After a year or two, I wouldn't even have the slightest feeling of uneasiness, even though the house felt creepy at times. After a few years of living there partying and just having a great time for a 17-year-old, something weird happened. I got in front of the house, and just had the weirdest and strong feeling that someone was home, as I never had before. As I was saying earlier, my dad would sometimes swing by to get his mail, but noticed the parking lot was empty. Checked the front door, and it was locked. So I just shook it off, and got in. I instantly dropped my bag by the doorway, opened the TV as a background noise, and sat at my laptop, all on the first floor, to send out some paper that we're due the same day. All of a sudden, I hear the loud and clear sound of the downstairs washing machine door opening, some clothes being pulled out of it, and then the usual noise of the dryer with someone putting wet clothes in it, the selection knob, everything. I was frozen in fear at first, since I was still feeling a presence or something but also tried to ignore it to feel better. But then, I had a flash that my dad's girlfriend had plumbing issues the week prior, and I simply assumed that he dropped her off to do laundry while he went and ran some errands, the reason why the parking lot was empty. I just felt some kind of relief, shouted my greeting to my dad's girlfriend to no reply, but with the sound of the washing machine slash dryer and it being so far down the basement I figured she might have just not heard it. Then I hear the door of the dryer slam shut, a selection knob creaking, it being pulled, and finally the steps of someone walking steadily toward the staircase leading upstairs. The layout of the house made it so that I was sitting on the ground floor at the kitchen table on my laptop, and I could just stretch my neck a bit to the left to see the corridor leading to the stairs. I heard every step, every usual creaking of the stairs, all as normal as ever, and when it got to the last one I greeted my dad's girlfriend only to not see anyone popping out. I just stared in silence for a few seconds, called her name a few times again, I remember holding on my headset being frozen in place and just hoping to see her head pop off and laugh as if it was just a joke and the day would keep on going on normally, but no. Nothing. I slowly walked toward the staircase expecting to see her stopped halfway for some reason, even this eventual possibility was creeping me out for some reason, but there was just no one, nothing. I could see the basement being as dark as it was all the time, even in the middle of the day. I shakily called her out one last time really hoping it was some kind of prank. Opened all the lights up walked toward the cabinets hiding the laundry appliances, and everything was off, cold and still and used for a week or so. I remember vividly the contrast of the comfort of being home, super chilled, in broad daylight just enjoying my day, and being paralyzed with fear and contradiction. I swear to God, I heard and straight up assumed someone was here with me for an hour just doing laundry. I called my dad right away, and he was with his girlfriend on a romantic getaway four hours north. I slept upstairs until he sold the place a few years later. This happened to me back in 8th grade and I didn't remember it until my cousin brought it up. We went down to a beach for my aunt and uncle's anniversary. My cousin was more than happy to invite me along with him and I was more than happy for a week at the beach. But as luck would have it, my aunt and uncle's anniversary turns out to be in the middle of February, so I realized that we decided to bring our Xboxes. We made it to our hotel safely and due to some booking issues they sent us to a sister hotel they had. Now I say hotel but it was really a motel in a kind of crummy part of town. We got there to drop off our bags and settle in when we were on the third floor. We're there for no less than an hour when we get a knock on the door. My uncle checks the peephole and opens the door, and it's our first official interaction with the crazy neighbor. At first she seemed nice, a little pissed but nice. She politely asked if we could keep the noise down so we obliged and closed the door. I understood where she was coming from. It was late at night after all, the rest of the night was normal. I crashed very quickly. I woke up to my aunt making breakfast. Everyone talked about their plans for the day, since me and my cousin weren't gonna go swimming we decided to go and walk the strip down the beach. My aunt and my uncle had already left shortly after breakfast. While me and my cousin were getting ready, we got a second knock at the door thinking it's his parents. I went to check the door and it's in fact not my aunt or uncle, it's some lady. 
I thought about the lady from last night and figured it could be her. When I opened the door, she looked very irritated. I could tell whatever she had to say wasn't good. I didn't even get a word out before she spoke to me. I came up here yesterday and I already asked you people to keep the noise down. I'm standing there confused on what to say cause honestly we weren't making much noise at all. I apologize to the woman and she stands there for maybe another 5 seconds looking at me then leaves. I told my cousin about it and we shared a laugh and finished getting ready. The day was filled with random stores after random stores. After a while naturally we got hungry. We both had our own money to spend but in the interest of saving it we decided to order it. Going back to the room we turn on the TV and try to find a pizza place. While this is going on we are trying our best not to make noise to avoid another encounter with this woman. We knew she would throw an absolute fit if she had to come back up again. Well we figured out what that woman's last straw was, so our pizza gets here and we start to eat pepperoni if you're wondering. While getting ready to eat I hear absolutely furious footsteps coming up the stairs, clearly sensing something is not normal. I go to look out the peephole and of course it's the crazy neighbor. I call my cousin over to look and he does. He's freaking out asking what we should do, and while he's talking I'm looking through hole again and I can't tell what she's doing but she's looking down. I look at him and just tell him I'm going to talk to her, but then something happened that made me realize what it was she was doing on the other side of the door. Because as I go to turn the lock it turns by itself and I'm standing there amazed at the fact that this woman unlocked the door. Standing there shocked sure didn't slow my reaction time cause as soon as it hit me I locked the door and took a step back. My cousin looked just as shocked and as scared as me in that moment. We collected ourselves and I looked back through. She was still there and she knew we had to be inside cause she started saying through the door. I know y'all are in there open the door I just want to talk. After 10 minutes she left. We didn't know what to do, scared she would come back and try to open the door again. We got our pizza and ate by the door. We called my aunt and uncle and told them what happened. They were shocked to hear and rushed home from dinner. They came home and we told my uncle what happened and the police called when the police arrived. They came up to talk to my uncle, and one went down to talk to the neighbor. After the cops talked to the neighbor, they came up and told us the reason she was so angry was because we were stomping going up. We were stomping up the steps. We had to explain to the cops and his parents that we were in fact not stopping going up. We came to the conclusion that it must have been when the pizza guy was walking up the stairs since it happened right after that. And as to how she was able to unlock the door, we figured out that one key opens every door, and it also turns out the woman lived at the motel. It was hard for me to go to sleep that night. I was afraid the woman would come back. I mean one key that opens all doors. That's insane and extremely dangerous if it falls into the wrong hands. We slept fine though, and went home the next day. I know that probably wasn't as scary as people were expecting it to be, but in the moment it sure terrified me. That was the first time I realized how people can go from 0 to 100 real quick. I don't know what that lady was planning on doing if she got in but honestly I never want to figure it out. So crazy neighbor, who tried to break into my room to do God knows what do me a favor let's never meet again. Hell Lou. I just came across this subreddit and gosh some of these are terrifying. I do have a story of something that happened to me from a long while ago, but in hindsight it was really dumb of me and I feel terribly dumb now, so I've always been hesitant to tell a lot of people I know about it, except for my psychiatrist lol. And I always apologize for long posts so it's so hard not to hear. There were some other conversations I had with this man named John, it was mostly him talking, but I left some of them out for length's sake. This was a few years ago. It was pretty late, past 1.32 am. I was living with this boy who was pretty abusive, and he had gotten really jealous at this party we were at earlier that night. Not even an hour after we had gotten home, he tossed me out onto our front porch and locked the door behind me. I was knocking and pleading for him to please let me back inside, I was still wearing what I had worn to the party and it was freezing out. I wasn't sure what to do, he had my phone, purse, and wallet in the house with him so I just sat on the porch crying. When he turned off the lights both inside and outside of the house, I knew he wasn't going to let me back in. I felt so helpless and cold. I thought about knocking on a neighbor's door, though he didn't have many, but I had anxiety about waking any of them up and causing trouble for my boyfriend. So instead I decided I would try to walk to this gas station and motel, which was like a little less than a mile away, so I could use their phone to try to call a girlfriend of mine to see if I could sleep over with her. Ironically enough the road I was walking on Donner Pass Road so the freezing cold was fitting, but anyway, a little bit into the walk this tall white pickup truck was approaching on the opposite side of the road that I was on. I tried not to make eye contact for obvious reasons, 
but then I heard the truck stopping and beginning to make a U-turn and my heart just started pounding. I just about froze up but forced myself to speed walk at the very least. The truck pulled up to me and this guy rolled down his window and asked what I was doing out this late. I told him how I was going to meet my friend at the gas station and that she was expecting me. He sort of smiled and offered me a ride. I said no thank you, saying that I shouldn't hitchhike. He told me, well good, I don't pick up hitchhikers, or anyone. You don't look like a hitchhiker though, you just look like you need some help. He just kept driving next to me and told me I shouldn't think he was a creep and he pulled out what looked like a police badge and told me he had just gotten off duty which is why he was in civilian clothes and out so late. He said he wouldn't mind driving next to me just to make sure I got to where I was heading safely. I was naive and a bit too trusting of his kindness and credentials and when he offered me a ride again I said that it would be nice because the gas station wasn't that far away anyway. He popped the door open for me and I hopped in. The radio was low, it was a little messy. The estray was full of cigarettes, there were a lot of newspapers on the passenger floor, as I was moving my feet some of the papers shifted showing a pair of handcuffs, some coffee cups, empty water bottles, rags, a highlight colored bandana, and some other things. He apologized saying that it was the truck he took hunting, but it was super warm so I was happy and didn't mind at all. He told me his name was John, he asked why I was scantily dressed without a jacket and I started to tell him about the party and the fight I had been in with my boyfriend. He was super charming and attentive, he even laughed that he could go back and arrest him. I asked about him and he told me about his family. He was a young dad, he had a wife, a daughter, a son and a dog, and I told him it was like he had the perfect little family and he laughed and said he certainly did. Then it sort of clicked for me to ask him if I could use his phone, but he said no because he had to save his battery. We were approaching the gas station and he drove right past it. I politely said, oh, I think that's the one, but he didn't answer me. I felt sick to my stomach. My heart started pounding, I started getting choked up. My eyes started tearing up as I was looking out the windows and watching the lights behind us getting further and further away. It was hard for me to even speak but somehow I murmured, asking if he could please turn around and he ignored me. Whenever I would look at him he just looked empty eyed and emotionless, totally dead and glazed. I looked back out the window and down at the road to see if maybe we were going slow enough that I could make a leap out of the car without seriously injuring myself. I remember always hearing, never go to the second location, but I thought about the possibility of jumping out and breaking an ankle and how it would be a lot harder to get away with one foot as opposed to two, debating with myself that there was snow on the ground, but then again, snow is hard to get along in, especially when you're not fully clothed. I feel so dumb now too because I wasn't even tied up or anything, I was just so scared though. Like there was nothing but trees, an empty road, and us. I was crying pretty badly at this point and asked if I could please borrow his phone again, I don't know why I even asked, and he told me to stop talking. Then he started talking underneath his breath saying, girls shouldn't be out so late. You shouldn't have been alone this late. Look what you're doing to me. Dress like a slut. And other derogatory things. As he kept saying these terrible things, too many to type out here, I wasn't even responding, I was just crying and trying to think past the fear I was feeling. I remembered the pair of handcuffs I remember seeing under the papers beneath my feet so I used that little I don't know how to describe it, like, scoopy motion. I managed to use my feet to scoop the handcuffs up and use my heels and toes to push them under the bottom of my seat, as far as I could. I was thinking of different things I could do to try to help myself, like if we were close enough to some upcoming lights or structures, if I ever made it to them, I could just grab the wheel and cause us to crash into them, or maybe how if I got lucky enough for a cop to pass us. I could grab the wheel and swerve so he would appear to be a drunk driver and we'd get pulled over. I guiltily thought about the possibility if this man is just having a weird night and how if I did anything it would hurt him, but I told myself that sort of thinking sort of got me into this mess. He pulled off road where there were still woods on both sides of us, on his side the wooded trees were closer to the road, on mine, but there was a small gap fully covered in thick, I don't know how many feet of snow, before the trees thickly picked up maybe 10 to 16 yards away. He turned off the car and coldly said there was something wrong with the car and to get out with him. As he grabbed the keys and was stepping out of the car, I grabbed onto the center console and cried and pleaded not to make me get out with him because it was too cold. He turned around to face me, his door still open and shouted at me to get out of the car because we had to go check out the trunk bed hatch. I dug my fingernails deeper into the console, thinking my cries of no and head shaking would cause him to come around to my side of the car and drag me out himself. I was crying and said, please John, I'm so cold and scared. I was thinking of everything I ever heard, humanize yourself, use first names. 
he stared at me in this way. I can't even describe it to this day, I don't even know how to start. He got back in the car and I slinked towards my window, scared he would drag me over the console. He turned off the headlights and everything just looked dark blue. He stared at the steering wheel for what felt like years before lighting a cigarette and looking out his window and back at me and then back out his window. He heard me shuffle my feet on the newspapers, I was just adjusting my legs, but while still staring out his window told me if I thought about running, he had a quick way to get me where he wanted me. And oddly enough I was sort of thinking of running minutes before that, but reasoned that if he wanted me out of the car then I should definitely stay in, otherwise he would chase me or shoot me, in case he had hunting rifles in the back, I didn't dare look. I'm glad I was right. I think at that point I sort of hit some sort of bottom of my reserve and instead of panic, there was numbness and exhaustion. There were still an occasional hot tear or two, but I just remember being numb. I talked to a psychiatrist about this sort of thing and he thinks it just came from my ex-boyfriend's giving me PTSD. It was dead quiet but I finally just barely audibly told him that my friend was still waiting for me and asked about his wife and children and he flatly said he didn't have a wife or children and that his house was empty. I asked him what he was thinking about and he said, I'm thinking of what to do with you. He didn't say it angrily, he just said it flatly and coldly which sort of scared me more. I did start getting worked back up to a cry, at that point and he told me not to cry and turned the car on offering me some heat. I just cried and said I wanted to go home. Eventually, he started driving, and kept driving until we were approaching a gas station. I was gauging the right time to reach for the wheel but before I could, he started slowing down. While pulling up, he told me not to tell anyone or he would find me, then he told me all he was doing was teaching me a lesson not to hitchhike with strangers. He was almost coming to a complete stop, when he told me to get out before he changed his mind, before he could even get another look at me to assess my understanding, I was already down out of the truck and sprinting towards the gas station. The panic was overwhelming me but then I stopped and remembered to try to see his license plate. I turned around but only caught the blur of the last three numbers as he was driving off. I ran inside and asked the clerk behind the counter to please call the police. I waited until the officer got there and I'll be honest I was a little scared it would be John. My fears melted away when the new-faced policeman got there. I gave him the description of John, his appearance, the vehicle color and type, the parts of the license plate number I had caught, the fact he said he was an off-duty cop, just basically anything I could. I asked him if he could look at the camera and the officer disappeared in the back for a little bit then came back out saying there was nothing on the I asked if I would be able to look and the officer said no and asked me if I didn't trust him and I told him of course I did. The officer gave me a ride to my friends lecturing me for hitchhiking consisting of him repeatedly asking if I knew who Ted Bundy was, of course I knew, I was just naive to think it could never happen to me and I was desperate for some warmth. I never heard anything back about the report that was made, so I would try to follow up and each time I did, they never got back to me aside from this one time I was told my case number didn't exist but that didn't stop me from trying to follow up. Throughout the months and years I asked my friend, whose home I slept over at that one night, if she ever heard of any weirdness or anything since that incident had happened to her or anyone up there and she always says no. So I sort of let it go and tried to tell myself that maybe he actually was just trying to teach me a lesson or something. I mean I definitely never hitchhiked again, so if it was a lesson, it certainly worked. I never heard anything back having to do with the case. I never heard of any other odd experiences up there, maybe it was just one man trying to teach me something. But honestly sometimes I think I tell myself all of that to help me sleep better at night. It all felt really real. Even if it wasn't real, I'm really glad I didn't get out of the car in the woods that night. This has also been super therapeutic to let out, so thank you so much for letting me to post here. Dot. Edit, I'm not really the biggest fan of a few of you trying to inbox me saying you're John, so if you could maybe not that would be super neat, thank you.